Hello and welcome to Which Stethoscope is Best? My name is David Woodruff. I am the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. Let's talk a little bit about stethoscopes. I get lots of questions from nurses uh, and students as well about what stethoscope is best. Which kind of stethoscope should I get? People who are might, maybe moving into critical care might ask, what stethoscope should I get to make this move? Well, let's take a look because there's hundreds of models and there's huge differences in cost. I mean, you can find stethoscopes that cost under five bucks, and you can also find stethoscopes that cost two, three hundred bucks. So, which one should you choose? That is the question. There are a number of different types of stethoscopes, beginning with the cardiology stethoscope. The one we see pictured here on the screen is one of those basic run-of-the-mill type of stethoscopes that a lot of us use in the clinical area. It's just a standard stethoscope. Two-sided stethoscope, has a diaphragm, has a bell, and it's just a standard stethoscope. It's not a cardiology one. Uh, there's an infant natal, neonatal uh, stethoscope as well. There's the pediatric stethoscope, electronic, and a teaching stethoscope so that we can listen to the same sounds that students are hearing at the same time to be able to help them to make sense of those sounds that they're hearing. Some questions to ask yourself about stethoscopes before you run out and buy one is, what is your job? That'll make a big difference as to what kind of stethoscope is really important. How will you use it? Are you just going to use a stethoscope occasionally to take vital signs with? We could pretty much use any stethoscope for that. Uh, or are you going to be doing some more physical assessment? And maybe you're working in a respiratory area where you really need to listen to fine lung sounds. Or you're working on a cardiac floor and you need to listen to some of those heart sounds. Or maybe you work in OB and you need to listen to fetal heart tones. So whatever the case may be, we have to think about how the stethoscope is going to be used to be able to make some sense out of which kind would be best. And the third question I put there is, is it likely to walk away? I had bought a very nice stethoscope after nursing school, and my first job out of nursing school was in a coronary care unit, and we had residents going through there, and they would ask to borrow your stethoscope because, of course, they never had theirs, and it would walk away. I got to the point where I would say, okay, you can use it, in the room with me here or you're going to have to go ask somebody else because I'm not letting you take my stethoscope out of the room because I'll never see it again. Most stethoscopes are, are pretty good for the type of nursing tasks that we may have on a regular basis. So some of the nursing tasks that involve using a stethoscope are taking blood pressures, taking an apical pulse, listening to breath sounds, bowel sounds, and maybe vascular brewies. This one that's pictured here is a Littman Classic 3. So a Littman Classic 3. Pretty nice stethoscope, but it's a general overall stethoscope. Uh, what you may notice about it is that it has two diaphragms instead of having a bell. Now this particular stethoscope, you can unscrew that second diaphragm and you can put on a different type of diaphragm if you'd like. So this one has an adult and a pediatric diaphragm. You can take the diaphragm off and you can put a bell on instead if you wanted to do so. If you're going to be spending a lot of time differentiating heart sounds, so you really need to be listening for murmurs and gallops and clicks and rubs and all those things cardiac, then you might want to invest into a better stethoscope. You're going to be able to hear things a little bit clearer, a little bit better, having a better stethoscope. The tubing's a little thicker, it's a little better designed, the earpieces fit better, the diaphragm itself maybe is a little bit better at picking up the sounds and distributing the sounds. So you might want to think about that if you're going to be working in an area where you really need to be able to differentiate sounds. Uh, this is a cardiology uh, four, and uh, I used one of these well, I was a cardiology three or two or something, I don't know, uh, for years. I got it as a, it was from a, a relative who had purchased it to take blood pressures on herself. So her blood pressure was high, so she purchased it so she could take her own blood pressure, probably used it twice. 
And when she died, her family said, hey, can you find any use for this thing? And at the time, I was using one of those $5 stethoscopes, you know, because mine had been ripped off so many times. And so I got one of these. And it's like, wow, I am not letting anybody else use my stethoscope. So, you know, the, the, even the attendings would ask, can I buy your stethoscope? Um, no, <laughs> because this one is not walking away. This baby's pretty good. But I really enjoyed it. I, I really thought that the sound quality was very good. I could hear a lot better than I could without having tubing rubbing together or other kind of things that are happening with stethoscopes. And uh, it, it was a very... A very functional stethoscope. The other one you see pictured there is a Sprague Rapport uh, stethoscope, also very popular stethoscope. It's a moderately priced stethoscope. So you'll see a lot of nurses have this. Uh, again, you can see that it has the option to be able to exchange the heads. In this case, on the one on the left there, it's got two diaphragms, so maybe a pediatric and adult diaphragm. On the right-hand picture, it's got a diaphragm and a bell. So you could exchange them and get different sounds depending upon where you work and what kind of patients you'll be listening to. So here's a couple other stethoscope heads. Uh, this one here that you see on the right, this is a specialty head. With this kind of a head, it works differently depending upon how hard you press on the head. So if you press very hard on the head, it acts more like a diaphragm, less, uh, less pressure on the head, and it ends up acting like a bell. So you can hear two different types of sounds. Uh, this is also a Lippmann that we're picturing over here on the right. The other piece that it's mentioning here on the left is that the length of the stethoscope will affect sound quality. The longer that tubing is, the worse the sound is going to be. So if you can narrow up your tubing a little bit, and in fact, uh, Littman offers them in smaller lengths when you buy them so that the tubing is tuned especially so that you're able to hear well. If not, then simply if you have tubing like the uh, stethoscope that's over on the left-hand side here, you can just cut the tubing and then move your uh, tip, you move the uh, diaphragm up and push it back into the tubing up a little further so it's not as long. Another question that we're frequently addressing is whether or not we should use the bell or the diaphragm. Typically, this is what we have heard in the past is the bell is for low frequency sounds and the diaphragm is for high frequency sounds. So in some cases, some murmurs like a diastolic murmur, a low frequency, and uh, the diaphragm is used for some higher frequency murmurs, breath sounds and things like that. With the bell, you can hear higher sounds if more pressure is applied to the bell. However, there have been additional research studies. Now, the idea of the bell being low frequency, diaphragm being high frequency, is something that for the most part has just been passed along from age to age without having a lot of research behind it. Uh, we have been able to hook these up to recorders that will measure the frequency, and we can see that the bell is able to pick up lower frequencies than the diaphragm, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what you're going to hear through the bell or the diaphragm. So in a study done by Memorita et al., they found that there was no difference in sounds profiles between the diaphragm and the bell. So and what they did is they hooked their stethoscope up to a recorder, and the recorder had a sound device on it that was able to visualize what the sound waves look like so they could tell what the sound profiles were. We also have our budget stethoscopes. The main benefit of having a budget stethoscope is it's cheap. And in many ways it's probably good for most tasks. Picks up a lot of background noise because they're not, they're cheap, you know, okay, they're not designed to be super great. Uh, notice the ear tips on this. They're made of hard plastic. Those hard plastic ear tips oftentimes don't fit as well as the softer rubberized ones that you see maybe in the more expensive stethoscopes. The tubing is thinner, so you get more outside noise, etc. And then uh, the head on the stethoscope is not made as well as the heads on the more expensive stethoscopes. But nevertheless, they are cheap. And so, you know, in some cases where you're concerned about them walking away or uh, something like that, this may be the thing to get.
They may be good for most tasks. They're, certainly, you can take blood pressures with them. You can listen to breath sounds with them and things like that. Uh, so, you know, you have to consider where it is you're working and you have to consider your own experience. So if you're using a stethoscope that you have a hard time hearing with, it might be worth your while to buy a more expensive stethoscope and see if it helps. Here are some other types of stethoscopes as well. Down in the lower left corner, we have the double stethoscope or the teaching stethoscope. Notice that there's two different stethoscopes that come off of this. Uh, one has red tubing or a dark maroon tubing, the other has black tubing. And that way they can differentiate which one is the teacher and which one is the student. So the student and teacher would both put the, uh, the earpieces in and then they would listen with the diaphragm or the bell to the patient. So oftentimes we'll do this in a lab setting where we can put on some kind of a sound and we can listen together so that we can assess whether or not a student's understanding what the sound is. The next one you see there in the middle, the yellow one that's in the middle, that's a disposable stethoscope. So those are the ones that we use in our isolation rooms. We use them and then we toss them uh, because they're disposable and they're cheap. And they're also going to have very poor quality and sound, but they may be good enough to be able to pick up your blood pressure, your breath sounds, and a lot of the common things that we do on a regular basis. Up in the top right corner there, we have a picture of a stethoscope we would use for fetal heart tones. Notice that cupped bell that it has uh, that tends to be able to allow to uh, get deeper sounds and to be able to hear sounds we couldn't hear otherwise. Then we have the electronic stethoscope. That's the one here on the front. So this is one example of an electronic stethoscope. There's many different varieties and types. But basically what it does is it takes the sound into the device and electronically amplifies it so you can hear it a little bit better. Some of the newer ones also have filters, so they filter out some of the high noises, low noises, etc. Kind of like the noise reduction headphones and that they can help to filter out some of those sounds that we don't want to hear so we can pay more attention to the sounds we do want to hear. Clean well. Holy cow. It's amazing. 85% of stethoscopes are cultured for pathogens. Ew. Including Staph aureus, Pseudomonas, VRE, C. diff. Nasty stuff, right? As a general rule, okay, now your unit may be different, and certainly you may have a better uh, process that you use for taking care of your stethoscope, but 80% of healthcare workers don't clean their stethoscope regularly. And only about 4% of the time are stethoscopes cleaned to the CDC guidelines. Wow, that's pretty bad. So let's make sure we're cleaning them. So some best practices for using your stethoscope. Stethoscopes rely on an airtight seal for best transmission of sounds. So we need to have those ear pieces in the right way. They need to fit well. So if they're too big, too small, whatever the case may be, if they don't fit well, we're not going to be able to hear sounds as well as we could. The sound quality diminishes when it's used over clothing. We have to have a direct skin-to-skin -skin contact. So as best you can, try to get to the skin-to-skin. -skin. If you can, ask them to you know, pull the shirt up in the back or whatever the case may be. Contact with the skin causes the plastic to harden. Many of you have probably seen this. You've had a stethoscope you've used for years and you keep putting it around your neck and especially the cheap ones. And after a while, it starts to take on that shape permanently. It has that kind of permanent shape to it. Okay, so we want to be careful with that uh, because that it actually will cause it to harden over time. So you can get stethoscope covers that will go over the plastic so that it doesn't uh, interact with the oil on the skin. Clean your stethoscope on a regular basis. Hold the diaphragm firmly against the skin, but hold the bell gently against the skin to be able to hear the sounds the best. There is a reference list that is attached here, and you'll be able to find it below the description of this video. Thank you for joining me for which stethoscope is best. I hope this helps you in your decision-making process. My name is David Woodruff, and until next time, bye now. <laughs>